But to me, when you have had parents with sexual assault allegations, parents with several arrests, parents with where the mama will take the, 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 the fall for the daddy, where they cheating, fighting with, people, with other celebrities, you know, out in clubs and shit. All of the stuff that has happened in their relationship and y'all think King is the embarrassing part? That's what I think is hilarious. So let's listen to what, what DL had to say. T.I.'s son, right. King had like, you know, right. he, was, he was basically saying that he went through a lot of struggles. Right. His mom and dad are like, and he's live. He's right. just live. And it's, while they're in a suite, mind you, right. you know? But right. basically saying he's been through all these struggles, and his mom and dad are like, yo, like, you know, you had a silver I saw spoon. It. I you saw, saw it. it. Uh, and, and, and the thing about it is, I've known T.I. and Tony for a long time, and I've watched how hard they work. And I'm, I watch how hard they value their family. And to have somebody that you work so hard and sacrifice for, to shit all over your memory and your accomplishment for clicks, it's insulting. Did you hear what he said? Do y'all really feel like that's what is going on? First of all, can you please tell me what sacrifices they made for them kids? Because I think that's just something that people like to say. You just like to say that because a parent worked hard, whatever they were doing was a sacrifice for their kid. When that's kind of bullshit. That's kind of bullshit. T.I. and Tiny were doing whatever the fuck they wanted to do. They weren't making sacrifices for their kids. Like, no, they weren't. T.I. was doing whatever the fuck he wanted to do, and Tiny was following behind him. What sacrifices did they make specifically? I want to know. I want to know what T.I. and Tiny gave up so that their son could have something. It doesn't feel like they gave up anything. That's what sacrifice. Sacrifice is I gave up something for you. Them people didn't give up nothing for those kids. But those kids do get to reap the benefits of their hard work. Yes, that part. Yes, he has grown up with money and, and in that way has grown up with a silver spoon. But y'all are intent on misunderstanding how he can't really communicate what he's talking about. Because do y'all really think y'all teach these young black boys how to communicate well? Or do they just get angry? But D DL really took it to another place for me with this comment. Shitting on them. Shitting on their sacrifice. How is he shitting on their sacrifice by saying that that's cap and I didn't grow up with no silver spoon in my mouth? That's not what he's really saying. He's not saying I didn't grow up with money. He's saying I didn't grow up in some Huxtable-like life the way y'all perpetrated on that reality show. Why can't anybody understand that? Kids need attention. Kids need time. Kid, kid, kids need focus. And when I say attention, it doesn't mean, oh, scream and holler at them every time they do something wrong or coddle them and ignore when they do shit wrong and just be like, I don't feel like dealing with it. No, that's not what that means. And a lot of celebrity parents are not hands on parents. A lot of them are not. And they talk about feeling bad about it. So it's weird to me when celebrities who spend a lot of time away from their kids, act as if those kids have no right to feel hurt by the lack of time and energy that they received growing up. When we grew up, we actually grew up in the circumstances they romanticized about. If it was that great, um, it was the inspiration for T.I. getting out of there and Tiny getting out of there. Yes, it inspired them artistically, but you don't want your children to grow up in the same stuff. Any no parent will Then why did y'all continue to do the hood shit? And this is another thing I can't stand about y'all. The refusal to admit that this community romanticizes street shit. Stop fucking acting like that little boy romanticizing street shit all on his own. His mama and his daddy and everybody in Atlanta and everybody in the black community romanticizes standing on business. Y'all was in the panel last night, right? Everybody thought the way T.I. handled that situation was cool because them people was wrong, right? Okay. Okay. But just understand, screaming and hollering, cursing at people, getting violent, 
is the way that everybody likes to handle discourse. T.I. has taught his son how to handle discourse. You just think that because you paying for shit, they not supposed to handle you like that. And that's really a slavery mentality. Nika, I said the same thing, but apparently, you know, nobody wants to spend money on lawyers. So we can just pull up with a whole bunch of henchmen instead. Hey, however you want to handle it, just understand that you can't handle shit in an aggressive way. Like you're, you know, coming with your people and muscle, muscling motherfuckers with bodies. And then when your son wants to muscle everybody, you know what I'm saying, in that same manner, everybody's acting like he's embarrassing. Who taught him this? But because then people was wrong, T.I.'s response was adequate for everybody. That's cool. But just understand that that's where the little boy is getting it from. And I'm going to call him a little boy because he's 19. He's not grown like everybody keeps trying to make him. And that's another thing, black people. Stop trying to make it seem like your kids are older than they are so that you don't have to be responsible for them. I want their children to have it as hard as they did. When we grew up, we were... Also, can y'all stop clowning y'all kids for not having it as hard as y'all do? Because that's another thing everybody keeps forgetting about this dynamic. It's not just that the kids are romanticizing hood life. Y'all have made them feel like they ain't shit because they didn't get it out the mud. But the one thing you could do, what you, what, what you couldn't do is tell a black woman that her kids were dirty or they weren't taken care of. And that's exactly what he's doing now. He's insulting the, the effort they put into raising him. Just for clicks, for what? And see, that's the thing. I don't think it's just for clicks. Everybody thinks that because he was on live, he got on live in order to force that confrontation. I don't think that's how that happened at all. He probably was already just on live because that's what kids do. I'm at a fucking football game that's on on Sunday on national television right now. I'm going to get on live to show y'all we in a skybox because I'm fronting, right? I'm showing everybody how me and my family got it like that. We in a skybox at the game, motherfucker. That's why he was on live. Who knows how they got to the point in a conversation where T.I. and him are having this, you know, you ain't never grow up with a roach on your on your ear. Trifling motherfuckers. What for what? Right, right. You're only famous because he's famous. Right. Right. You're famous, you're in that box, shitting all over his memory because he's famous. And you're doing it for what? This is personal. He's projecting. So this is my comment. Now, DL, as a father who also has ignored his kids' feelings, this shows a lack of growth. Now, they got 99 people in these fucking comments that want to argue with me, but essentially, you can't tell me I'm wrong because this man is projecting from the space that the people in his life, no matter how much money he can spend on them, no matter how much access he can give them, they still are hurt behind the way he did not show up as a parent, and he's mad about it. Because all his hard work for himself was supposed to make you not feel a way about wherever he failed you. Right? So you can be famous. Yeah. King ain't say shit about being famous, but okay. Yeah. You, you, you're famous because your daddy's famous. And most generally, generally this, is a, this is an old ancient proverb. Famous don't usually have roaches. You grew up on a reality show. I bet I didn't see no red or decon in the corners. <laughs> hey. Look, man, hey, if, if you grew up in the reality show, here was a roach on there, he was a paid actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, listen, you came up the, the hard way, and, you know, you, sure. you got kids, you know? Sure. You, what do you, how do you manage that? Like, you know, I'm sure your kids maybe probably didn't talk like that, but there's... But the one thing you could do... Obviously, what you didn't think felt that they were sufficiently appreciative of what you've done for them. Right. But I think in the end, my children are much older than he is now, and I think in the end, he'll understand how silly what he's doing is. There's probably been moments where you're like, hey, you got it good. There, there have been moments, obviously, what you didn't think felt that they were sufficiently appreciative of what you've done for them. Right. But I think in the end, my children are much older than he is now, and I think in the end, he'll understand how silly what he's doing is. He's silly, but you said a lot of shit. Let's go back right quick. T.I.'s son, right. King, had like, you know, right. he was he was basically saying that he 
went through a lot of one thing you could do what you what, what you couldn't do is tell a black woman that her kids were dirty or they weren't taken care of and that's exactly what he's doing now he's insulting the the effort they put into raising him just for clicks for what well so because he said that they cap they cap they cap they lying because they're lying about something he's saying that that means that he is insulting their efforts at parenting him and that's how a lot of y'all feel. A lot of parents feel like you, your children can't be honest about their experience of you because then it makes you a bad parent. You're trying to say I'm a bad parent. No. Can we not hop to a conclusion? Can we hear what I'm actually saying, the part I'm actually talking about? But that's a way for you not to have to be accountable and make yourself a fucking victim instead of listening to what your children are saying. And then y'all wonder why they don't deal with y'all as they get older. I don't like nothing this nigga said. Have you, have you ever woke up with a roach on your face? No, that's not the ghost. All right, then. Yeah, man, go. Or in your ear. I don't know what you're talking about. I got some in the neighborhood with me that broke up with a roach in your ear. Y'all want to go to the bando and met my neighborhood? Y'all want to go to the bando? I think another thing people don't understand, like, and I was saying this, y'all, Atlanta is still a ghetto. And what that means is you can find motherfuckers selling drugs and doing street shit everywhere, especially in nice neighborhoods. OK. Like, it, I just feel like people really don't understand where King is coming from and they don't want to because they want to just see him as a spoiled brat that, you know, isn't appreciative of what his parents have sacrificed for. But if anybody was actually listening to the words being said here. They would hear what he's saying is, I did not grow up the way y'all perpetrate that I grew up and that I have had to fight. I've had to be in situations where I had to prove myself because I am your son. That's another thing they not really understanding. So y'all don't think people was picking on King because he was T.I.'s son on a reality show, whining and shit. You don't think they picked on him because they thought that he was a rich kid. He got in fights in high school all the time. He just not calmed down with getting into it and being outside with a group of young men doing shit he ain't supposed to be doing. And I just really want people to understand you could have money and still be involved in street shit. Meaning that you could still be out there on the street with little niggas that want to sell drugs that want to wanna, uh, perpetrate a certain lifestyle, that want to get in fights, that want to have these moments where they got to prove their manhood. He's also 19. He's at that point when he is trying to separate himself from his family as a man while simultaneously figure out who the fuck he is in this environment where they're telling him he got to be hard and shit. la di da di da I, I appreciate you for being a member, and I understand. I understand. I know I'm just like all of the other subscription services, baby. You come back when you need to, okay? T.I. was taking him and his brothers to the hood, talking down to them for not being hood. My cousin's neighborhood is decent, not rich, but right now. And that's another thing. That's another thing. And that's why I can't stand. They're, talk, they're basically clowning him because he didn't grow up in the hood. That's another thing that people don't really get about this dynamic. They're making him feel bad because he did not grow up in the hood. It's like, nigga, what you want me to do? People are being dense because King has come across as the more problematic child. But it's obvious to me that boy is hurt, and I agree with you. And that's what I, that's all I can see, y'all. That's really all I can see is a kid that don't know how to compute what he's feeling and that parents often make children perpetrate lies. And as they get older, they get tired of perpetrating lies because those lies kind of make them feel bad. Make them, you know, like you, you want to, you, your image is more important than how I feel. That's some shit, man. Do y'all want to go to the house? You know, you can do that in the house. Tiny is wrong as fuck right now for this shit. Y'all continuing to clown him. He gets really upset, and then y'all want to jump on this old oh, weed. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. And see, this is what I'm saying. There, him in a background arguing with his son like this is antagonistic. Him arguing with his son like this is antagonistic, y'all. I don't care what nobody talking about. I know, I, you know, I know you. 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 I
And this is where I stand on business. Business don't give a fuck who you are. I don't give a fuck who you are. Motherfucker can't play with me in my face. Not going for that. I'm a grown ass man now. Poor little delusional tink tink. Okay. Through it all, I'm a stand tall. Why with the weird angles? Manipulation is when they blame you for your reaction to their disrespect. Let me tell you something. He's spot on with this one. He is spot on with this one. Listen, somebody in the Mr. David said that pacifier comment from his mama did it. And see, here's the thing. Y'all will be quick to point out that Tiny was being antagonistic to her son because y'all always like to show how women turn their sons into these assholes, right? But pay attention to the daddy that's in the background leading the shit and she's just following behind him. But she gonna stand in front of him because that's what that's what the, the programmable bitches do. They be programmed to stand in front of the man and, and, and perpetrate whatever it is he has programmed her to perpetrate. But to me, I feel like this is exactly what he's going through. And they don't, look, arguing with your parents because you didn't grow up in poverty and you would rather have been outside is wild behavior. And look, 5,000 people like the comment. 5,000 stupid motherfuckers that don't understand he is not arguing about growing up in poverty. That's not what he's talking about, y'all. I, I just really hate when people don't don't use, you know, anything deeper within themselves to understand what was actually happening in this argument. If I'm a mistake, say that. Stop making the world think you fuck with me when you don't. This is shit that kids say when they really are sad and just don't know how to deal with their feelings. They don't know how to deal with what they feeling and what they thinking. Because nobody's taught them. Tip says, fuck with this internet talking about the H family tied like a knot. We all we got for life. I'm a ride to the heavens or the depths of hell about my junior. And ain't nothing going to change that. Now tune in to the new episode of Go Talk With Me and My Junior out now on Complex. Okay, so we using that to promote business. Let's stand on business. I will let you tell it. You, you, you was an orphan. That is not what he said. And this is what I'm talking about. Y'all be jumping off the fucking curb, not really listening. But you want to hurry up and run to a conclusion so that you can make yourself a victim. Batman, that's Batman's story. I'm a grandma boy. Man. I I'm like to be up. in the neighborhood yep. I'm with glad the you kids I'm outside. Glad you wanted to go over there. And that's not the hood, y'all. He's not talking about poverty. He's talking about growing up like a regular kid. And that's what people are not understanding. They think he's talking about growing up in the hood. And he like, no, I wanted to be a regular kid. And when I went by grandma, I could be a regular kid. And sometimes regular kids get into shit. It's not about poverty. He has no concept of what real poverty is. Yeah. yeah. So you made it seem like we were sending you over there. No. You cried and cried and cried when you couldn't go yeah. over there. You know what I'm saying? I always say, King, stay home, stay home. Why were you giving him a choice? Can somebody explain to me why the fucking parents are letting the kid dictate where he goes? Hey, man, you would hold your no. breath, turn red in the face. Look, no. we'd have got big, big house. Yeah. Big yard. Yeah. Nothing to do. That when you learn and create your own entertainment. I was outside. I want to play football, basketball. Mm -hmm. That's the type of one. It, do you hear what he's saying? He wanted to grow up like I did. <laughs> Regular ass neighborhood. You go outside. The kids is playing. We have a good time. Everybody go inside. Your parents is home. And I was. But you no. want to be from the ghetto so bad. I will let you tell it. You, you, you. You see what I'm saying? Totally ignoring what he said. Yeah, man, it's a lot about that TV show, man, that got people confused. Because um, I live with my grandma. You know, we'll go to the house on like the weekend. They'll say, hey, we shooting today. We need y'all at the house. They'll come get me from my grandma's house. And right after we done, when them cameras go off, I'm right back to my grandma's house. Mm. Yeah. Bruh, he didn't say nothing about growing up in poverty or growing up in a hood. He didn't say anything about that. But that's exactly where people keep going. And that's what I'm saying. It must be really frustrating for him that they keep ignoring what he is specifically saying. Grandma house was the fun house. It's not even just that it was the fun house. I bet you he got a chance to really get attention. 
And I mean like in an intimate way, not just he acting a fool to get attention, so now we paying attention to him. No, grandma is at home. Grandma in the kitchen when you get there. You can go outside and play and have a good time, and grandma going to be looking for you at the end of the night. And it's so aggravating to me that all you old motherfuckers can't understand what he's talking about because all you old motherfuckers grew up going outside, riding y'all bikes, and having a good time with y'all friends, too. Right. King had, like, you know... Right. He was, he was basically saying that he went through a lot of struggles. Right. His mom and dad are, like... And he ain't say that neither. He ain't say nothing about going through no struggles. He's live. He's right. live. And it's, while they're in a suite, mind you, right. you know, but right. basically saying he's been through all these struggles and his mom and dad are like, yo, like, you know, you had a silver I spoon. Saw it. I you saw it. it. Uh, and, and, and the thing about it is I've known T.I. and Tony for a long time and I've watched how hard they work. And I Same thing. I ain't see. I ain't hear this part about famous niggas don't usually get roaches. Child, y'all ain't seen Blueface House, huh? <laughs> the fuck? What, what the fuck being famous got to do with being trifling? Anyway, y'all, um, I wanted to show y'all the video of D.L. Hughley, right? But first, let me let me show. Okay, Tamika said, quit playing with my family for clickbait. Clickbait. I've had about enough. And here's the thing, y'all. As as a as a social media person myself, as a commentator, I don't ever want to be considered somebody that does anything for clicks and views. I really be wanting people to listen and look at these situations because they're reflective of our community. Our collective black community ignores children when they come to adulthood and they want to speak the truth of their experience. Y'all ignore them. Y'all y'all demean them and y'all try to joke on them and play them out instead of being honest and saying that you made some mistakes with them and that some of the decisions that you made could have hurt them even, that, even though that wasn't your intention. But you don't want to take responsibility or accountability for the way you showed up as a parent. You don't want to do that because that's too harmful and hurtful to your fucking feelings for you to have to have an uncomfortable conversation realizing that you failed your child on some level. I want to have the conversation because I want us to talk about it so y'all can stop making these mistakes with y'all kids. That's why I want to have the conversation because there are things that are happening here that we can learn from. And once you can identify what's actually happening here, you can heal from it when you understand it. But everybody wants to act like shit is not happening. Y'all don't want to understand. Y'all don't want to dive deep. Nobody wants to go deep. Y'all want to stay surface level on every fucking thing. And then you wonder why you're unhappy. You wonder why you're emotionally volatile. You wonder why you need alcohol and drugs and shit to, to, to cope all of the time. And I'm talking about these people. I'm not talking about me. Oh, you know. <laughs> okay. Listen, I'm one of them. I'm just saying we should have these conversations instead of always trying to act like whenever we have these conversations, somebody is, you know, trying to use you for clickbait. Because there are people out here like it was the same thing with the Beyonce situation. I was getting fucking offended because I'm like, why I can't say I don't like this look without everybody trying to overly explain to me what the fuck going on. I, I know I, I know why. And I still feel like I don't understand why. You can name all of those different factors. Oh, they edited the vid. Child, people still writing paragraphs to me on fucking Twitter trying to explain to me why Beyonce looked like a white woman. And I just want everybody to allow me to make the statement without having to overly explain anything because you want to defend your face. I'm tired of y'all, okay? People do too much. But essentially, this topic, I feel like we need to have a conversation about. You guys provide the content, Mrs. Harris. No, Mally. They've taken an honest family moment and added all that type of bitch into it. What? Bullshit onto it, as they always do to give views on their lackluster platforms. Is that right? No, this is what you have to tell yourself. This is what you have to tell yourself, because I would want to know what post specifically did you see that makes you feel like somebody adding bullshit onto it? Because a lot of the times when people are trying to explain to y'all what's really happening, you don't want to see it. Nigga, you can talk to me. Okay. And so now T.I. is standing on business. T.I. goes off on the Atlanta club after they made a party flyer making fun of his situation with King. You put me and mine on the motherfucking flyer, nigga, give me everything. And if you can't, don't play with me. 
As I said last night, I don't mind T.I. showing up to the club and handling this situation. I don't. But I also feel like the way he handled it, the volatility, the anger, the screaming and howling, the cursing people out, all of that shit, there was another way to handle it, and you handled it this way. So when King handles things in that same manner, standing on business, why is everybody surprised and acting like King is the only embarrassing motherfucker in the family? Ain't nothing going. Ain't nobody getting nothing going. Nothing. Call who you need to call. Do what you need to do. Ain't nothing happening. No money, no beers, no, no partying, no sections, nothing. You put me and mine on a motherfucking flyer, nigga, give me everything. And if you can't, don't play with me. I don't know if y'all from here, but nigga, don't play with me in this city. My motherfucking city. Don't play with me in this city. Nigga, you. Okay. So, y'all, hold up. Give me a second, and we're about to hop over to YouTube quickly. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up. Anywhere you say, anywhere you say, You talked about before how you had a baby outside of your marriage. Sure. And the boyfriend of the mother ended up killing the child? Sure. Shook it or... How, how old was this child? Nine months. Nine months old. Yeah. Wow. So were you, were you, had a relationship with the child and you were... I was a scared kid. I was trying to keep it under wraps. I was hustling to pay... Oh, so this was child early support. on. Yeah, it was very, yeah, early okay. on. And I was hustling to pay child support and... Uh, I remember she had come to me and said, if you don't uh, put me on your life insurance, I'm going to tell your your wife what happened. Okay. And um, I decided that I would have one great weekend with my family, and then that, that Sunday I would tell them what happened. Um, because I wasn't going to um, make that leap and put them on my life support, uh, my, my, li my life insurance, and mm -hmm. until I got um, confirmation, until I'd gone to, you know, take the DNA test and all yeah. that. And, and so it had, that was like a Thursday. And then, um, so, and it was an Easter, which would have been that Sunday, so I decided I would I would go to church with my family and I would tell them after church and get ready to spend my last weekend with my family. And um, oh, you I, figured your wife was gonna leave you after that? Oh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. So I, uh, that was a dumb plan in retrospect, but so Saturday night I'm performing um, um, at Maverick Flats in Los Angeles. My friend calls me and says, the baby's in the hospital, he's not gonna make it. And I remember praying that God would take this off me. All that time, I was like, and instantly, I thought two things. My prayer was answered, and it was the worst thing that ever In the worst happened. possible way, it was answered, yeah. So I go to the hospital, and I walk past the family, and and he is laying there in the bed. And I see him, and I see her and her boyfriend and her family. And they're all staring daggers at me. And I went to him, and I tell him I'm sorry. Because I know I would have, or I like to believe that I would have been a father. I was scared. That's no excuse, and I'm not making one. And, and I don't want anybody... Fucking baby was nine months old. You like to believe you would have did some shit? I think I am making an excuse. I'm giving it's just from a clinical perspective is what happened. So, so I go home and um, 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 it was the most the quintessential bittersweet moment. So I uh, go to church with my family. I pull over to a phone booth. I call the hospital. And they asked me who I was, and I tell them that I was his father. And they said he just passed. And it was the same moment I, that I had planned in my head to tell my wife that I hadn't, um, that what had happened. Was the, was the boyfriend charged? Yeah, he went to jail. Yeah. He went a to long jail. time? Not long enough. Not long enough. He's out, so he killed a kid. He's here. Killed your kid? Yeah, he did. Did you feel a sense of revenge you needed to have? I or? feel a lot of things. 
I feel like yeah very sad right what was this and you already had kids at this, at this I point I did I did but it wasn't uh, listen I felt uh, that I didn't have the right to feel revenge because he wasn't I wasn't in his lane and I felt that somebody robbed me of something and I feel right now that I you feel like you didn't have a right to want revenge it's, it's something I think about Every time something good happens to me, I think about that. Think about that. Sure. How did your wife take that whole thing? Well, my wife didn't know about that till uh, you. That, that's a karmic response. Years later, where? Oh, okay. You kept it quiet. Yeah, because again, I was a coward. I'm not disputing that. So, years later, the girl was. I had the baby with, uh, um, I just couldn't take it. So, a couple years later, I just told told my wife. And um, back then, you could go to the gate. But I'll buy the ticket. It was for 9-11. So you could just meet people at the gate. Remember that? So I, my family would always meet me at the gate. So I had told my wife months earlier, I get off the plane. My wife is there. The girl I had the baby by is at the airport. Hmm. And she sees me, and I see her, and she sees my wife. And I you, I don't know what was on her mind, but I got the sense. She was like, oh, I got you now. So when she came, when we walked off, I walked up to her, my wife. I said, this is the girl I had the baby by. And my wife said, I'm sorry for your loss. That was that. It wasn't. Well, then months, <laughs> years later, it's, it's, it's a long story because it never. Yeah. So then years later, the girl, you know, it, it jammed her up too, like it did me. And, and, and But I wasn't a mother and I wasn't with her every, with him every day. And she started uh, asking for money. She needed some money. And I told her my wife would have to take care of it because I couldn't. So her and my wife talked and my wife started giving her money. Now, here's the horrible thing about that. So your, your wife was giving her money years later mm -hmm. after the fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so... She, the condition was that she could never ask me. My wife would take care of it. So my wife took it from my from my allowance <laughs> that I never gotten back. So I don't know if she's still giving it to her or not. Okay. But I know that I don't get that money. Anymore. She, she took a chunk out of the. Uh, she took a chunk yeah, out and of the. I, and I can't go. Hey, are you still? I can't. You can't so do I, that. So. Well, you said when you were thirteen, you were dating a twenty-three year old. I don't know if I dated her. I knocked her. Off. <laughs> Is that when you lost your virginity? No, I lost. I, first off, to lose your virginity means that you were you wanted it. Now I lost my virginity at eleven. But I thought, I thought, I thought, and there's this girl lived down the street to me, and, and I thought. Okay, so y'all see how we went from him talking about how he prayed for for the baby to go away, and then fast forward to now, I was assaulted as a child. It's the same thing that Young Jeezy did in that interview with Nia Long. The first eight minutes, he tells us all of this horrific shit in his childhood, so that when he tells us why he's a terrible person, we know there's a reason for it that we can feel bad about. I.e. Kiki and Darius. He has a reason for why he's an abusive asshole. And when I say abusive, y'all, I'm talking about emotionally and mentally, too. Because did y'all hear what this man was saying? He wouldn't even get his girl money after you basically denied the child until the fucking child died. And then you telling us that you was praying for God to take this off of you. And you felt relieved when the baby died. All because you didn't want to have to tell your wife who you was already treating like shit from what y'all said on Black Love. That you was cheating on her and had a baby on her as if she probably didn't already assume this. So this is the person who y'all want to take advice from about some fucking kids. What did he say about King? What, what did he say about King, y'all? Let's go back. What did he say about King? What, 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 where is the clip that they cut it up so I could go right to what he said? But the one thing you could do, what you, what, what you couldn't do, is tell a black woman that her kids were dirty or they weren't taken care of. And that's exactly what he's doing now. He's insulting the, the effort they put into raising him. Just yeah. for clicks. For what? For, for what? Right, right. You're only famous because he's famous. Right. Right. You're famous, you're in that box, shitting all over his memory because he's famous. And shitting on his memory like T.I. is dead. Shitting on memory like T.I. is dead. Ain't it crazy how a man can stand from such a moral high ground and speak with such confidence about this teenage boy? And this is the life that you lived as a man?
wh where is the compassion for the 19 year old that, 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 that doesn't have any of this shit figured out yet? No compassion for the 19 year old, but you're sitting here with fucking Vlad, which I just finished crying face. Talking about how you was dogging your wife out and how you dogged out that lady that got pregnant by you and how you didn't have no responsibility to that child and it had the audacity to pray that God take it up off of you. I'm going to say it how you say it and not say it the way I'm translating it. Ain't that some shit? So when we go back to my comment that says, now DL as a father, who also has ignored his kids' feelings, this shows a lack of growth because if you had really grown from this moment, from what you were talking about in this moment, there should have been more compassion for what King is talking about. As a father that has done some children fucking wrong, there should be more compassion for the fact that people don't always do right by their kids. And sometimes the kids are trying to deal with that and they don't know how to deal with it in a way that's respectful. There's another way that DL could have talked about this situation. But he took the approach of projecting his own bullshit onto these people's situation. And you're doing it for what? So you can be famous. Yeah. yeah. You, you're, you're famous because your daddy's famous. And most generally, generally, this is, this is an old ancient proverb. Famous don't usually have roots. You grew up on the reality show. I bet I didn't see no red or decon in the corners. <laughs> hey, look, man. Hey, if, if you grew up in the reality show, here was a roach on there. It was a paid actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, you listen. You came up the, the hard way, and you know you, sure. you got kids. You know, sure. Sure. You, what do you? How do you manage that? Like, you know, I'm sure your kids maybe probably didn't talk like that, but there's. But the one thing you could do, what you what, what you couldn't do, is tell. It there's probably been moments where you're like, hey, you got it good. There, there have been moments, obviously, when you didn't think, felt that they were sufficiently appreciative of what you've done for them. Right. But I think in the end, my children are much older than he is now, and I think in the end, they'll understand how silly what he's doing is. Is that right? Okay. So, hold up, y'all. D.L. Kingsley's daughter. Assault. I'm just putting in keywords, child. Let's see. Because I can't never spell D.L. Hughley name right. So this is what it's originally started. Hold up. Let's go to Lipstick Alley. <laughs> Thank you, Lipstick Alley. And he also was raped with his daughter the whole time and went to jail. So it's to me, he's always going to be the dude. All that kind of shit. Jeez, man. Okay, Gio <laughs> Hughley is here. He's at Caroline's this Friday, uh, 7 30, 10 p.m. Also, Saturday at 7 30 or 10 p.m. You, you're probably one of the most outspoken uh, comedians, especially black comedians, about Bill Cosby. What is your relationship with him? Well, I, I think he's a you, you, look, you can be tremendously talented and be benevolent. Like when Lucifer, when he was in heaven, he was God's most dear coach. <laughs> <laughs> but I just I just think uh, he, I, well, in 2009, I was, remember when Kiss FM was here, right? Yeah. I was hosting the show. And, and people don't know that Bill Cosby sought actively to try to get Def Jam out there. He didn't want us. Like uh -huh. you, so I we had had a run in, and I knew he didn't like me. And I like him. He called in two thousand nine, called to do an interview. Shit. I knew he didn't like me, so I just let them do the interview. And about mm -hmm. ten minutes in, he was being such a dick. You know, I, 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 all that kind of shit. Wait, so I say, man, not uh, it's not it. What, is it not it? Mr. Cosby, what do you want to know? Who is this? This deal, deal, Hughley. You say nigga, and you do this, and you say, and I say, well, with all due respect, Mr. Cosby, when I cuss or I say nigga, uh, no girl ends up wearing underwear on backers and drugs. <laughs> wow. And when I say nigga, when I cuss, it's on the it's on stage, not a police report. And uh, we go back and forth, back and forth. It's a true story. Uh, and he says, this is not going to air. I said, the fucking ain't, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought it would. Ten minutes later, five to ten minutes later, the people from KISS FM, MS Communication, yeah. came down, took that tape, said if it airs, you'll never work on radio again. Took it from everybody. Said this better never air. And it did not. And it did not air. I'm telling that's true shit. I swear that on my kids. So, so I know he's powerful enough to make that up. So now you don't think he, so you're telling this story now. I told it then. I oh, told it on told time. It on no, no, this oh, is okay. not. No, no, this oh, you, is. Oh, you told the story. Oh, yeah, now. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. people only hear what they want to hear. Yeah. Like, I, I, I had known this for a long time and said it a long time ago. I remember I was on Tom Jordan's show. He gave me, he's the one who got me my radio show, and I was on his show, uh -huh. and I told him, don't talk about Mr. Cosby. They, they really, they, they have this idea. Like, you can be, like I said, you can be profane. You can be profound. You can, he's a lot of, is he's a humorist. Yeah. He's a benevolent, he's a, you know, he's a humorist. He's a, he's a, a humanitarian. And mm -hmm. He's a rapist. That's what, you yeah. can be all of wow. them. be all of yeah. Man, I lived across, I lived next door to a dude, man. He, he was my, he was, he took me to the free clinic. He told me about life. 
and he also was raping his daughter the whole time and went to jail. So it's to me, he's always gonna be the dude mm -hmm. who who didn't everybody's do it. How come when people do stuff like this, they're always above reproach, nobody ever believes them, and then it's always a lot of victims. Mm -hmm. And it's always and, and the reason it hits home to me is because my youngest daughter said something happened to her, and because it was somebody I liked, I didn't believe her. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll never get that back. She'll mm -hmm. never I'm supposed to protect her, and I'll never get that back that she got she told her father something and he didn't do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Because it was inconvenient. So I, I can see how that could play. Mm -hmm. right. And there's so many bro everybody wandering around why women are mad and why people are like that. Look at the, the shit they go through. Yeah. Like when when she said on color purple, a girl child ain't ain't safe in a family for a minute. That's yeah. fucking true. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's just that he is categorically, every everybody you ever see is, is like priests who are above reproach or coaches who are above reproach. Right. Yes. Teacher. Nobody teacher. They would never. Why are you? Somebody's boyfriend. I watch y'all with you. And he played on it. And he and to this day, he's never said he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. He got mm -hmm. women defending him. He ain't, he ain't never one time said I ain't did it. Now, ain't this hilarious, y'all? Isn't this clip hilarious, y'all? Because it's literally what's happening right now. The women in the comments arguing with me, trying to protect D.L. Hughley because they think he's grown from something. And I'm saying he told you he ignored his child's feelings because it inconvenienced him. And I'm telling you that King Harris's parents are ignoring his feelings because they inconvenience him, them. It's the same thing. So when we go back, when we look, I, I told you I was going to break it down for y'all today. When we go back to my comment that says it shows a lack of growth. It's because if you really did understand that you made mistakes ignoring your children's feelings to watch them people ignore their son, this should not have been your motherfucking response. Period. Who's next?